everyone, it's Robin, R. Silent Crafts, and welcome to my studio. Today I'm going to show you how to make a quick and easy patchwork placemat. With the holidays just around the corner, we may need something to put down on the table for our friends and family, or we just may need an extra gift. You can make matching placemats for everyone around the Christmas table or the New Year's table, or you can make individual placemats for your guests that they can take home with them when they leave after the celebration. The materials I used for this project is I had a fat quarter bundle that I used to cut up into my squares. I used the scraps from that to use for my binding. My backing was also part of the fat quarter bundle and I just used some cotton batting and thread. Scrap fabrics, pre-cut bundles, or just use what you have in your stash. If you're really tight for time, just get one fun fabric for the front, another one for the back, and then you can just whip it out real quick. If you've been here for a while, you know I like to make things that are really bright and colorful. So I've chosen this set of fat quarters and I'm gonna use three and a half inch squares. Now you can change the size of this. If you wanna make something like my sewing machine mat and you want it a little bit larger, you can either use more squares or maybe you wanna use a charm pack and use five inch squares. You can also just use more squares. If you have a lot of two and a half inch squares left over from jelly rolls or just two and a half inch squares in your scrap bins, you can use those, lay them out, do a little bit of figuring out the size that you want or you need, or just make it any size that works for the scraps you have. Sometimes it's fun just to make a little mini quilt to put it on the wall. But today I'm gonna to make something more along the lines of a placemat. I cut out 20 three and a half inch squares. I'm gonna sew mine so that they're four down and five across. If you're new to sewing and patchwork quilting, this might be a good project for you. If all of your seam allowances are the same, if you haven't quite mastered that quarter inch seam allowance and yours is just a thread or two larger than it should be, as long as you line all of your squares up and you match your corners, your seam allowance isn't the most extreme importance here. It's good to master that quarter inch and we can do that through practice. I'm gonna go with the quarter inch seam allowance because I've been practicing and I've been able to do pretty well with it. And I'm gonna use a 2.0 stitch length because that's what works for me when I'm sewing my quilts and patchwork. I'm going to lay all of my squares out in a four down and five across configuration. And I'll show you what layout I've chosen. One of the things you may learn over time that happens to most, if not all of us, is that you can spend a lot of time moving everything around. What I like to do is I like to just do a first layout and then I look through my camera or I take a picture and then I look at it. At one point I had two of these blues almost right next to each other. They were just a little bit like diagonal or something and I just didn't like the way it was too heavy in that one because of the way the blues kind of pop out a little bit for me. So I just moved things around and rearranged it to the point where it looks okay. If I really like the layout, then I take a picture of it so I can remember how I had it. You can also lay things out on a design board if you're not going to finish sewing it right away in one sitting. That way it'll stay in one spot and it won't move around and get lost. So this is my design board, my larger one. I think I made this one 17 or 18 inches. This is just a piece of foam core that has some batting on it and it has some binding around it. I'll put a link down below to the video for a tutorial for this, but I know I'm gonna sit down and sew this with you guys today. When I'm sewing patchwork, I like to sew everything in columns. So I will take the second column and move it over. I find it better for me that once I figure out my rhythm and how I wanna do something, I do that with every project. That way, it gives me an idea of what I've done. So if I step away for some reason to answer the phone or someone knocks on the door or whatever might interrupt you, I can come back and know that, oh, okay, I took the second column and put it on the first. I took the fourth and put it onto the third. So that way I can easily come back and pick it up and know what I did. You could also put pins in it. One of my biggest problems is when I go from here to the sewing machine, I tend to take my pieces of fabric that I'm working on and I tend to rotate them and spin them. For this project, it's not that big of a deal, but if you were doing something a little more intricate, 
maybe you decided to use little four patches in each of these or you had some quilt blocks that you want to build off of you want to have it to be the way you wanted to have it so you could always take some pins and even if it's not lined up perfectly to just put a pin or when I'm doing something like this I will put a clip on it and then I'll know that I need to sew the seam on this area where my pin or my clip is. That way I go from here and I just go a couple feet over that way, I don't get it all mixed up and mess up my rhythm. But for today, I'm not going to worry about that. I will save these for when I start sewing everything together. Again, quarter inch seam allowance, 2.0 stitch length. I'm going to chain stitch these. I'll take you guys over to the sewing machine so you can see that process and I'll go ahead and start stitching my columns. Now in chain stitching, that just means you're going to put one section of your block, two pieces of fabric here, one right after the other, and we're not gonna cut the thread in between. That's gonna save us some time, it's gonna save us on our thread, and it's gonna keep each of our rows and columns in order so that they don't get mixed up when we move from here over to the pressing station. I like to start out with a piece of scrap fabric underneath. That just keeps these fabrics from getting sucked down and from making any type of a bird's nest on the back of my block. Here's my first two pieces. I let it go a couple stitches so that my next block isn't touching right up against the first one. I want to have a little space in between to clip those threads after I get them all sewn together. Then I will just get my next piece, making sure everything is lined up equally and neatly on the edges. So I know if I can't see any of the block underneath that were covered, nothing sticking over on that side. I can just put it through. And then I'll continue on. After I've finished the first column, I like to add a couple of extra stitches. Or sometimes I'll just put through another piece of scrap fabric. That way I know that that first column is done, or my first row, depending on how you're doing it. I start my second one and I just keep feeding it through. And when I'm all done, I'll take another piece of scrap just to finish it off. And then I can leave it there waiting for me to start it all over again. I just clipped the thread from the back there. Now I'm all set for when I'm ready to sew my next ones because I've only just sewn the first two together on the first two columns, so we still have more to sew. I already know I'm doing mine in rows of four, but I can see here that I have my little scrap thread. So I know that this is my first column. And that's the second one. And I have my stitching here to the right hand side of the block just like when I laid it out. So I trim off my little scraps and I can use those again. Trim between each of the blocks. Now there are different ways that you can do this but for today we're just going to trim in between the blocks. Open them all up. You can take these over and press them right now or you can wait and press the entire row. I'm going to wait and press my entire row. You can just sew these loose ones onto the right hand side here or you can do like I'm going to do today and I'm just going to take these two strips and put them on top and I will do my quarter and seam right down. And then after I have all four of these sewn together, then I'll come over and I'll bring that last one in and that way I'll have my finished rows. So there's my four rows all stitched together and I pressed all of the top one to the left, all of the next one to the right, and I just did the same thing with the last two rows. So my next step now is to sew these two together, these two together, and then all of them together. So I like to get in the habit on here also of just taking the top and moving it down, taking the top and moving it down. Now you can put pins or clips in each of your seams here to keep it all well, or you can just take it to the sewing machine. Some people just take it to the sewing machine and nest their seams as they sew. And when you're nesting your seams, you have one going to the left and one going to the right. This is something you can see and feel. It's more of a feel, I think, 
So when I line these up and I put them together, I could feel that they're kind of a little lumpy right there. So if I just adjust them a little bit, it's like it clicks and locks into place. And now it's very flat feeling. Of course, it's thicker because you have your seam allowances there, but you can feel that it's just nested together. There are a few different ways that people put pins in. I always learned to take the pin from the right, put it next to the seam allowance, and pin it that way. As you're stitching, you remove the pins. Some people like to put them either up or down, or if you put it from here on the left-hand side, and you put it so you're just a little bit away from where the foot of your sewing machine is going to go, as you're sewing, you can just slide this out of the way so that you're not stitching over it, because you really don't want to stitch over any pins. Some people will do it, and they say they've been doing it for years with no problems. But I never want to take that chance because the pin, yes, could break and shoot you in the eye. That's always a possibility. But it can also do damage to your sewing machine. It can mess up with your timing or other things that I just don't know about sewing machines. Sewing machine is a very important tool to me, so I don't like to mess with it like that. So I remove the pins before I sew over them. Have I sewn over any pins? Uh, of course I have. Sometimes you just get going so fast you don't see it, you forget about it. But I do my best to make sure that I don't sew over any pins. I brought it from the top down so that I know I need to pin this area. So now I'll take these over to my sewing machine and I'll stitch them one right after the other still sticking with my quarter inch seam all the way through. So I stitched each of my sections together and then I did the final one. Now you can press it in any direction you want. I have one section is going up and one section is going down. I don't remember what I did with the center. Oh, it's going down. I also cut my backing fabric. This was in the fat quarter bundle and I didn't want to use it in the front of this little project. I thought it just the colors weren't right with the straight lines and everything. Even the ones that have the stripes on it, they're a little bit wonky. The squares are wonky. So I decided to use that for the back. I cut a piece of cotton batting. I prefer to use cotton batting. You can use anything that you like to use for your quilts. I cut both the batting and my backing just a little bit larger than my top piece, just in case anything shifts a little while quilting. I also cut my binding. I just took some of the little bit of scraps. When I cut out my squares, I cut a three and a half by seven piece out of here. Some of them I cut three squares out of. So I would just have this little bit left over. So I cut my binding strips out of that little bit left over. And then I stitched them all together. I like to stitch mine with the diagonal seam. See that there? You can stitch yours any way you'd like. I am using a two and a quarter inch binding. I'm testing binding widths to see which one I like for my project. So today I'm gonna to try two and a quarter. I've also put a quilting pin into the center of each block just to keep the layers from shifting. Quilting safety pins are just a little bit different than regular ones. See how it's got a little bit of a bend to it there? And that just makes it easier so that when you're going to put it in, when you're going through, it makes it easier to bring it back up. If you ever try to use a straight safety pin, it's very difficult to get it to come back up to the top. These are also labeled as rust proof, which is really good. So if I set this project down for a while and kind of get a little occupied with something else and I leave the pins in it, they won't leave rust spots in my project. I like to store mine in my Santa Claus tin. That way I can always find them. So now at this point I need to quilt it. If you don't want to do any quilting, you can use some fusible fleece. It's a small project. You could get away with not quilting it. I am going to do a grid. Because I have this patchwork, I like to do grid quilting with it. I'm going to do a line of stitching on either side of the seam going top to bottom and left to right. Eighth of inch away from the seam, quarter of an inch away from the seam. It doesn't have to be exact for me. You can make yours any way you want. You can also use a little serpentine stitch. 
you can quilt them on a diagonal through the center of each one. This is a small project. It doesn't need a lot of quilting. If you look at your batting package and read the directions, it'll tell you how far apart your quilting needs to be. For my batting, it's 8 to 10 inches. So I can get away with just putting you know, maybe an X on it or something like that. But I just really like the grid work. I'm going to use a walking foot. That way the top and the bottom both feed evenly at the same time. And that'll keep my fabric from having the top shift down this way and be longer than the bottom. So everything feeds evenly. Some sewing machines have an even feed foot built in. My Juki does not, so I just use my walking foot. I'm going to get this quilted and then I'll show you what it looks like. So you can see my quilting. Both sides are the seam, both sides are the seam, and you can see I trimmed it up. I have multiple videos here on my YouTube channel. I have them for how to trim up your quilt. I have various ones about doing the binding, whether you sew it by hand or sew it by machine, use the back for it, single fold, double fold. So if you need to learn about those, do a little search on my YouTube channel. There are plenty of videos to watch. I'm going to take my binding and I'm going to sew it to the back and then bring it around to the front because I like to have it machine stitched down, especially on projects like this that are going to be washed a lot. Machine stitch it down and I like it a little bit wider on the front and everything looks nice and neat. So I'll put my binding on and I'll show you what the finished project looks like. There it is all finished with the binding on it. There's a couple fun things that happen with the binding. So this fabric matched up there and that matched up there. But what I found was really interesting, this fabric here I used and this is how it ended up in the corner of my binding. So it made a nice little mitered corner with the red and white stripe with the blue along the outside. I thought that was fun. I love how bright and colorful these fabrics are, so this would be great if you want to put it down on the kids' table when you're having a holiday gathering or making an individual placemat with each person in the family's favorite fabrics or their favorite colors or just something you think they would like. So your scrappy word for today is going to be yellow. So thank you so much for hanging out with me while I made a fun and colorful placemat. Remember, change up the number of squares or the size of squares and you can make it into anything that you need it to be. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!